Hacienda Ford would like to thank those on the front lines for your sacrifices, your commitment, and for keeping us safe. Thank you. Bowling with you, coming to you from Laredo, Texas with Evie Vasquez, and here we go. Laredo United Longhorns taking on Laredo Alexander. And thank you again for joining us here for the broadcast as we are set to go. It's United passing the ball around up top, you know, trying to get a good shot, trying to see if they can find their way inside. They're posting up their big man, trying to see if they can go inside. Well, uh, United in the white uniforms. Alexander, the visiting team on the scoreboard. And the big question was, Marco Payne, you're going to play? Yes, he is playing in tonight's game, and he is starting for Laredo Al Alexander. Lit this gym up for 47 points. First time these two teams met. United with a real patient set out of the gate to start this game, and there's a shot on the way by Andre Pampa that won't go. Rebound taken down by Alexander. Quick pass ahead of the pack for the layup, and it's no good. Rebound, United controls that. A lot of contact after the rebound. You know, nobody's trying to give up any any, uh, any energy or, or any, you know, possession or any, any um, positive going forward, so they're, they're both fighting. I was keeping track of Andre, or Marco Pena during warm-ups. When I saw him come out on the floor, I was like, I'm going to just see how he's doing. He walked out beyond the arc. They were feeding him pass after pass. He was shooting. I counted 32 made out of 40 attempts during warm-ups for Marco Pena. United with the basketball. Work it inside. <clears throat> Ricardo Oliveras didn't get it back outside for a three that won't go. Rebound. Oliveras spins inside off the glass. That one won't go. Rebound. Alexander. Lids are closed thus far in this game on either side. Here's a three on the way by Kiki Perez. Count it. Kiki Perez with a three. United with the basketball. Lob inside. That one's up and in. Gabriel Gaetan. And now the scoring starts to get the flow of this game going. It took two minutes to do so. Six minutes left here in the game in the first quarter. Off the dribble, there's a shot that goes up off the back rim and limping is Marco Pena. You know, the physical and, the, you know, the tough uh, mentality, they're, they're both going to be a big factor here today. You know, they're, both teams are coming out of the gates, you know, being physical and hitting the boards. We'll see how that what how it trickles down to the rest of the game. Andre Pampa draws the assignment of guarding Marco Pena. He'll chase him. Alexander with the basketball. On the drive, a lot of contact, blocking foul. You know, and going back to your comment there about Pompa, you know, guarding Peña, those are the two best possibly uh, offensive players each team has, their best players. So it's always good to see best players going head to head and, and giving everything they've got. They went mano a mano the first time around. Sure did, they, they lit up the scoreboard. First one good. Elian Fernandez at the line. Misses the second. United with the ball. 3-3 three, three your score. Or check that, 4-2 your score. Oliveras hands the ball off to Pampa. Through the defense to Esparza. Esparza threw it away. On the turnover. Shout out to Freddie watching out there. You know, uh, Freddie, hope everything's uh, going all right. You know, uh, looking forward to working with you in the near future, man. Alexander with the ball from the corner on the drive. Handed off to a cutter through the lane. That one's off the rim. No good. Rebound tipped up and in by the Bulldogs. You know, giving that extra pass really opened up the lane. You know, he was able to find the open player and get that easy basket. Memo Salinas with the made basket. Working around the perimeter for United. Outside it goes. There's a quick three, and that one's off the rim. No good. Rebound. Out of bounds. Touch last by Alexander. That one won't go. Rebound. 
save back inbounds. Esparza there, and he'll throw it away. United right now, you can see that their, their offense just isn't in sync. Yeah, you know, they're trying to move without the ball, and, and Alexander is just being able to cut off those, those cuts, so they've been having a hard time getting uh, some good cuts to the basket, and they're just trying to see if they can get inside still. Marco Pena with the ball. Pass inside, that shot goes up and in. Ramiro Ortiz with the bucket. United with the ball on the dribble, nothing there for Gabriel Gaetan and the whistle blows. 4.06 left here in the first quarter of play. Thanks again for joining us here on realsportslive.com. Regardless of what format you're watching this on, five different platforms broadcasting this game live. Ricardo Oliveras as it gets it on top of the key. Taken there by Andre Pampa. Free throw line jumper extended. That one rims out by Abudaro Osuna. Here comes Alexander with the lead and the ball in the front court. No one stops him and Perez lays it in. That was a great hesitation there just to open up enough Enough room to get to the basket. He got the defender guessing and he was able to get by him. Esparza has the ball for United. Hands it off to Oliveras. Outside to Gaetan. Gaetan watches the cutters, but nothing developing there. Right side, nothing doing. They extend the defense, nothing easy thus far in the game for United on the offensive end. Clear out for Esparza. Esparza gives it up to Gaetan. Back to Esparza. Pulls the trigger on a three, no good. One and done, and Alexander gets the ball. Pena brings it front side. Guarded by a couple of defenders, now given room, frees the three, and that's off the back of the rim, no good. Rebound, ripped out of there, and that's gonna be Ramiro Ortiz. Another chance for Alexander. On the girls' side, Alexander dominated and easily walked out of here with a win over United. Alexander boys now out to a quick lead. Can go double digits with this shot. That's no good. Rebound by United. Here come the Longhorns in the front court. Pampa has it. Clear out for him. Given room. Guarded by Perez. Swings it right side. Stays beyond the arc. Back in the hands of Pampa. Pampa from the top of the key. Now on a switch. Guarded by Pena. And he gets... A whistle and a timeout they, called by United. They waved that shot off. The timeout was called first. 2.19 to go in the first quarter. Back after this. This is realsportslive.com. Whatever DIY project you've got going on this weekend, visit Habitat for Humanity Restore before you start. Check out HabitatRGV.org for more info or drop by our McAllen or Harlingen stores. Restore. Great stuff, great prices, great cause. Back here, Joe Bowling, Evie Vasquez alongside, and hey, after the first five minutes and some change, Alexander, 10 points as expected. United, two, unexpected. Right, and, and it's just something that, uh, again, it, it's possible for them to bounce back, but they're just going to have to take one possession at a time. Pampa has the ball on a clear out for the United Longhorns. Top of the key it goes to Rodrigo. There's a three that won't go. And on the rebound, a whistle and a... Foul's going to be called on Alexander, positioning for the rebound. You know, and another thing to note, Alexander, you know, they're very aware of where Pompa is at every single, you know, second in, in, when he's on the court. You know, they're actually face guarding him while, you know, the rest of them try to just kind of play some help defense. So we'll see how many touches he can get and how productive he can be tonight when we, when we see, uh, talk about Pompa. That ball out in the midcourt area. United with the ball, down by eight here in this first quarter. Esparza to the right side. Top of the key to Abaldero Osuna. Pass it off on that left side. Pedrago hands it off. That's Pampa on a clear out. Back outside it goes. United on another patient set as a result of Alexander defense. There's a force three. That one's off the mark. 
Rebound taken down by Alexander. Here come the Bulldogs trying to build on this lead. That's Perez. Missed the shot. Rebound by the Longhorns. Quick shot by Alexander. Longhorns back on the offensive end. Pampa in the corner. Gets it to Esparza. Esparza. Swings it back to Pampa on a clear out. Attacks on the baseline. Missed the shot but got fouled. You know, up to right now, Salinas, you know, from Alexander, number 13, had been doing a great job defensively. You know, he hadn't really been allowing Pompa to get to the basket. And the first time he does, you know, he draws a foul uh, from uh, Pompa does. So uh, we'll see what how Salinas can adjust and, and continue to try to keep him out of the paint. Andre Pompa at the line. Free throw good. Scores sometimes to get it started right there at the line. Pompa ready to go with the next one. That's good. Six-point game with a minute 12 to go here in this first quarter. Alexander Ball, Marco Pena, across the timeline. Quick double team, nearly throws it away. It is tipped and stolen, and here come the Longhorns, and that's Drago hands it off. That one's blocked. Rebound by Alexander. Hand it off to Pena. Pena brings it front side. Across the timeline, crossover dribble. Nice pass inside, layup good. Nice vision by uh, by Peña there to get to make that extra pass. Bulldogs back up by eight. Thirty six seconds to go. There's a whistle. Luvalier will check in the game for Alexander. Yeah, they're, they're sending Pompa to the bench to rest a little bit, I guess, to uh, end this quarter. United with the ball. Get it in to Pompa. Pompa on a clear out. Has some room to Osuna. Back in the hands of Pompa with 26 seconds to go in the quarter. Pompa lost his dribble, gives it up. Nathalian Fernandez. Fernandez hands it off to Osuna. Pompa now. Threw it away. Out of sync, United. You know, they're they're cutting a little bit better now. They're, they're recognizing, you know, that they're going to be chasing, that Alexander is chasing. Their ball cuts are getting a little better. They just got a little antsy there. Alexander with the ball on a clear out. That one's poked away. Loose ball goes out of bounds. It'll be Alexander ball. Five seconds left here in the quarter. Bulldogs will inbound it on the sideline. With the lead and the ball. Can they get a shot off? Three, two, one, and count it. At the buzzer, Alexander goes to double digits with the lead. They hold United to four points. We'll be back with the second quarter. This is realsportslive.com. The reason we made this Quesadillas Tres Marias is because there's a little village in Mexico that it's really popular and it's known for its quesadillas. You're gonna come to my kitchen and you're gonna see that we have no cans. Everything is fresh. We use achote. We do the mole ourselves. We have three types of quesadillas. One is flour tortilla. We have nistamal made, handmade tortilla. And our specialty, which are the fried tortillas. That's the concept we bring to the north of Mexico and south of Texas. For me, this is not only a business, you know? It's my house, it's my career, it's my family. These are my friends that come here. Brownsville, it's a gentle city, a kind city. I invite you to come discover Brownsville. You can't miss it. Back here, Laredo, Texas. Joe Bowling, Evie Vazquez alongside Laredo United. Finds themselves down 10. Alexander with the ball and the lead. Marco Pena back in the game. That was perfect execution to close out that first quarter for Alexander, who did just about everything right to build that 10-point lead in the first quarter, resembling how the girls played when they dominated the game against United prior to this. Alexander with the ball. There's a blocking foul called on, Ale on United. Elian Fernandez will pick up the foul. 
Stops play with 7.37 to go. Evie's over there scrambling, getting some notes together. Inbound play for Alexander from the corner. There's a whistle. That'll be a foul on Angel Salinas. Dance team for Laredo United, seated right down here in front of us. They'll be performing at halftime. Inbound play, Marco Pena has it. Steps up, got the shot away and made it. Marco Pena, that's his first made basket. You, you say that, we're in the second quarter and his team is up by 12. You feel real good if you're Alexander. Yeah, you do. You know, you, you're coming out and you're doing the little things right, you know, and, and it's giving you the lead and, and you're playing great defense and that's allowing you to go ahead and, and get some offense because of it. There's Rago, an open look. That won't go. Pena gets the rebound for Alexander. Pena in the front court. Crossover, crossover, lost it. Loose ball, still loose, and then the whistle, and a foul is going to be called, and that's going to be another foul on Elizondo. Or no, check that. That's going to be on Fernandez. It's one of those you're diving to the floor, and the ball's there in front of you, and then you make contact with another player who falls to the ground. And you're Fernandez. You're like, man, coach. All he asked me to do is die for a ball. I did, and I picked up my second foul just like that. Yeah, those are those are uh, those are plays that you know you you need to do, but you know you're you're looking not to get whistled on. But got a lot more game going for so. There's we'll a see. turnover against Alexander. United with the ball. See if anybody can pick up the slack right now for Laredo United. They scored just four points in that first quarter. Here we are in the second with 6.34 to go. United with the ball. That's Gabriel Gaetan. He's got a couple of their points scored, but they don't have many. Hidrago, the Gaetan, they go inside, layup good. Made by Fernandez. That's good ball movement. Fernandez with the bucket. 10-point game. Here comes Pena and Alexander. Laredo on a Friday night. Pena, that pass deflected. And Hits the rim, picked off there by the Longhorns. Outlet pass, and they want to run. Drago gets it forward. There's a three by Gaetan. It won't go. Quick shot, and then the rebound, and the foul is called. You know, and, and, and you're starting to get that feel for United. You know, if, if, if every time that they've been able to settle down and look for the open man rolling to the basket, they've been able to get it and, and get some baskets out of it. You know, and any time that, that they kind of rush a shot, that's what's kind of been hurting them. So rushing and, and uh, not setting up, Properly, it has been costing them. Laredo Alexander ball. Marco Pena brings it front side. Pulls the trigger on a three. That one won't go. Rebound by United. Can they save it? Yes. Longhorns. Now if they push it, may have numbers. Idrago hands it off. Esparza layup good. Like I said, if they pushed it, they had the numbers, and they did. Esparza on the finish. Eight-point game. Left-hand side for the Alexander Bulldogs. Perez on a clear out. Switch on defense. Perez takes it, hands it off to a cutter on the weak side, and a free throw opportunity coming up for Alexander. Ramiro Ortiz will step to the line. You know, they did everything right on that defensive possession from United. You know, they were able to hedge on that screen. They, they're, they're doing a really good job of, con of contesting the ball handler but yet their back line uh, help rotation wasn't there, so got him a foul. Ortiz, first one good. Ramiro, and he's got three points in the game. Substitution checks in. Osuna back in the game for United. Osuna, Esparza, Guzman, Gaetan, and Gonzalez in the game now for United. Next free throw good. You know, we'll have to check in a little bit how Equal Pass is doing against uh, Del Rio uh, just to see how things are going to shape up in this district. You know, you have a couple teams that, uh, three team tie, just like the girls coming in. Uh, one team is going to end up leaving here at 9 and 2, and the other at 8 and 3. We'll talk a little bit more about how this district is looking to shape up, uh, shake up a little bit later on. Three by Asparza won't go. Cleaning it up, though, is Osuna, and he'll put it in. 
4.49 to go here in the half. Back to a single-digit game. Pena, though, off the dribble. Whistles a pass inside. That one's up and in. Good look by Pena. Give him another assist. 4.34 remaining here in the half. United with the ball. On the dribble is Adrago. Adrago on a clear out. Nothing there. No Pompa in the game right now for United. So he picks up the slack scoring. How about Adrago? Yes. Nice screens, you know, by, by, the, by the big man in United being able to get them that open shot. He double screened there, was able to get that guard open. Drago now has three points in the game. Pena, that pass over in the corner. Perez, that's a three. No good. Rebound, United. Long outlet pass. Can they get there? They'll save it, but picked off by Pena. That was a missed opportunity there for United. Alexander scores here. That'll be big. This will be even bigger. No, short. Rebound. Offensive board by the Bulldogs. And then the travel. Had that pain your shot went down, that would have been huge. Yeah, it would have. It would have given them that 10-point lead and uh, gotten United in a, in, a, in a hole that's a little bit bigger, you know, as, as we close down this, this, second half, this first half. United basketball. Nothing there. Working outside. Pompa check back in the game. Work at right side. Further outside with Drago. There's a deep three. That won't go. Rebound. Kiki Perez. Out ahead to Ortiz. Ortiz finds a cutter. Shot up on the way. No good. Rebound. That's a push off against Alexander. Yeah, they're calling that offensive foul there as you try to get the rebound. You know, and, and you, you're seeing that from both teams. Both teams are crashing the, the boards. You know, they're doing everything not to uh, lose that physicality. It's just that sometimes they're being a little bit too antsy and, and turning the ball over and or, or causing fouls like that that hasn't really allowed anybody to get into a rhythm. Uh, we'll see how they finish up the second half. Papa has the ball. Where's his first half, I mean. To Guzman now on the baseline on that side that won't go rebound taken down by Alexander Man, that's just shots that normally are going to fall for United and they are not going down yet tonight Pena attacks lay it in Marco Pena has six shot in the paint rolls in this time it's good and a foul and Gabriel Gaetan gets to the line you know, that was great awareness. He saw the, the contact coming, and he said, you know, I got to prepare for this. He was able to jump up and get that nice touch to go through. Appreciate everyone watching on the social media. Those watching on Facebook, be sure you follow the page. Share the link. Also, like the page, if you will. Those watching on other media formats, whether it's on YouTube or on Roku Television, Apple Television, or on the website. There's a nice pass. Perez lays it in. You don't get back on defense. That's exactly what's going to happen. Kike Perez has six. United with the basketball. Back down by eight. As far as it, nothing there for him. Peels it back into the hands of Pampa. Makes a quick move. Forced that one. That's rejected out of there as Kiki Perez sent that away. Perez showed some defensive skill that time off the help defense. 217 remaining in the half. Inbound play coming up for United. There's an open jumper. That one won't go. Rebound. Longhorn save it back into Pampa. Got the shot off and made it. Andre Pampa, and that's just benefiting from offensive rebound. Now the whistle blows. You know, and sometimes that's all it takes. You know, when you get trash points like that, they're worth a million. And this is one of those games where Shots are not really coming to uh, easy, so things like that are going to be huge going forward. Alexander with the ball in the backcourt. Marco Pena dribbles through a double team and gets fouled. Pena will head to the line. One and one. 202 remaining here in the first half. 14 to 4 after a quarter. Alexander led. Pena makes the first free throw. Appreciate all the 
advertisers that are jumping on board here on realsportslive.com. We usually have a banner up there rolling. Trying to get some assistance there. And maybe we were just looking. There's some, there's some neat cameras just to our left-hand side that would be terrific for baseball and softball. All right. And, uh, you know, it, those things are coming, and, and I see, you know, great equipment being going to be used, you know, to bring you guys uh, some great sports. There's a three that rattles home for Tommy Elizondo. Or check that. That's going to be George Rivera. And they needed that basket. Back up to a double-digit lead for Alexander. There's a steal for the Bulldogs, and then the whistle blows. More free throws coming up for Laredo Alexander, and this kind of resembles that girls' game. Alexander took control of the, of the game, the score, and the pace. Right, only difference is... Uh you know, at, at times, Alexander looks great on defense, and then at other times, you know, they're getting beat down the floor. But, you know, if they can just go ahead and polish a couple more things, this game can open up and, and, and get a big lead pretty soon. Pampa gets the shot away. It won't go. Rebound by Perez. Perez has been active here in this game. Handed off to Marco Pena. Pena. Thought about the three. Had it poked away. Recovers the ball. Gets a pass to an open man. That's Arizola, and he made it and got fouled. Jay Arizola with the bucket. Minute nine to go. Back up by 12 are the Bulldogs. Great control going into the air. You know, in, in midair, he was able to turn at 180 and get his back on the defender and be able to finish there with, with uh, no problem. Arizola ready to go. With the free throw. Made it. Well, we got a group of students right there, right across from the United bench. We'll try to get the camera on them in a little bit. After a made basket, they go nuts for Alexander. United with the ball. On the left-hand side, losing control. Somehow it goes right to Pampa, put it up and in. Andre Pampa with the bucket. 51 seconds to go. Alexander with the ball. In the front court is Perez. Perez. Started on top by Carlos Guzman. Takes him off the dribble and travel. Yeah, he took an extra step there. Great defense by United there in that possession. So Impressive. You're, you're United, you're down 11. You could get a quick bucket, get another stop, and try to get on a little mini run to head into the second half. We'll see if they elect to do so. They'll get it into the backcourt. Racing ahead on the dribble. Handed off to Esparza in the corner, baseline, in the paint, lost it. Alexander with the ball. They've got numbers if they rush it. Here comes Arizola. He'll travel. Calls it, some, calls it a carry. Palm. Yeah, a carry. 25 seconds to go and a half. Well, you, you saw United was in a hurry to get a basket. They weren't going to be content to go for one shot. Still time to do that again. Pampa with the ball. Now he'll slow it down just a bit. Brings it across. Off the dribble. Goes baseline. Whistle blows. That'll be a hand check with 17 seconds to go. Andre Pampa to the free throw line. Tuesday night we're in San Isidro for San Perlita. Traveling there. Free throw good by Pampa. Cut it down to 10. You know, possibly down to nine with this free throw attempt here. And if you can stop them, you know, nine points is it's a lot better than, than what they had before. You know, that, that bigger lead that was just trickling up. And you might get one more chance if you can get a stop or a steal on the drive. Alexander with the ball. Evalier, there's a quick jumper that won't go. United with the ball. Now they've got a chance here with eight seconds to go. Here comes Bumpa in the front court with four over in the corner. There's a three at the... Buzzer, it goes off, and that's it. One half in the books. Alexander, led by 10 after a quarter, leads by nine at the halftime break. We'll be back. This is realsportslive.com.
opened Alex Oral with the intention to give people in Brownsville and those who visit us a very unique experience in the area of retail. We saw the need to give people a personal experience that only a boutique could provide. Here in Alex and Raw, what we work for is searching for different pieces, textures we bring from India, from Mexico, trying to make this a different experience. The people to find treasures here in their own valley. It's a pleasure to welcome everybody and making them a part of our family. We invite you to discover Brownsville. You can't miss it. At Illuminations, we're a one-stop shop. We have all the lighting you need for your new home, outdoor lighting, ceiling fans, chandeliers. So when you're building your new home, we work well with your builder. We'll get your floor plans or we'll walk the house if we need to. Make sure all the light fixtures that you get are going to work and are going to look good together. Illuminations is a family-owned business. We've been in business for 17 years now. My parents actually were in the construction industry prior to opening the store, and it was during this time that they noticed a need for a store like ours, one that would provide the customer service that contractors and new homeowners are looking for, and eliminate the headaches that you might get when you're shopping at a big box store and you don't get that one-on-one -on -one customer service. The Brownsville area is really growing. There's a lot of movement, there's a lot of construction, there's a lot of excitement. So we're glad that we finally have a store here that customers can come look at our products here locally. I invite you to come discover Brownsville. Whatever DIY project you've got going on this weekend, visit Habitat for Humanity Restore before you start. Check out HabitatRGB.org for more info or drop by our McAllen or Harlingen stores. Restore. Great stuff, great prices, great cause. doing some gardening or home improvements this weekend? Visit Habitat for Humanity Restore before you start. Check out HabitatRGB.org for more info or drop by our McGallan or Harlingen stores. Restore. Great stuff. Great prices. Great cause. Forever Memories, Antiques, and Collectibles is your source for vintage, antique, collectibles, vinyl records, and more. Located at 206 East Jackson in historic downtown Harlingen, it's Forever Memories, Antiques, and Collectibles. It's a step back in time with a soundtrack like none other. Open Monday through Saturday, filled with memories and more. Forever Memories is for you. The reason we made this Quesadillas Tres Marias is because there's a little village in Mexico that it's really popular and it's known for its quesadillas. You're gonna come to my kitchen and you're gonna see that we have no cans. Everything is fresh. We use achote. We do the mole ourselves. We have three types of quesadillas. One is flour tortilla. We have nistamal made, handmade tortilla. And our specialty, which are the fried tortillas. That's the concept we bring to the north of Mexico and south of Texas. For me, this is not only a business, you know, it's my house, it's my career, it's my family, it's my friends that come here. Brownsville, it's a gentle city, a kind city. I invite you to come discover Brownsville. You can't miss it. Help us give back to the community. Help us give
Forever Memories, Antiques, and Collectibles is your source for vintage, antique, collectibles, vinyl records, and more. Located at 206 East Jackson in historic downtown Harlingen, it's Forever Memories, Antiques, and Collectibles. It's a step back in time with a soundtrack like none other. Open Monday through Saturday, filled with memories and more. Forever Memories is for you. The reason we made this Quesadillas Tres Marias is because there's a little village in Mexico that it's really popular and it's known for its quesadillas. You're gonna come to my kitchen and you're gonna see that we have no cans, everything is fresh. We use achote, we do the mole ourselves. We have three types of quesadillas. One is flour tortilla. We have nistamal made, handmade tortilla. And our specialty, which are the fried tortillas, that's the concept we bring to the north of Mexico and south of Texas. For me, this is not only a business, you know, it's my house, it's my career, it's my family, it's my friends that come here. Brownsville, it's a gentle city, a kind city. I invite you to come discover Brownsville. You can't miss it. I opened Alex Oral with the intention to give people in Brownsville and those who visit us a very unique experience in the area of retail. We saw the need to give people personal experience that only a boutique could provide. Here in Alex and Raw, what we work for is searching for different pieces, textures we bring from India, from Mexico, trying to make this a different experience. The people to find treasures here in their own valley. It's a pleasure to welcome everybody and making them a part of our family. We invite you to discover Bronzeville. You can't miss it. Back here, we're ready to start the second half. Laredo Alexander on top of Laredo United. You were frantic putting some notes together. Evie Vasquez, what do you got? Right, and I was just trying to see how this district is going to scramble down to this last week. Um, and it's very similar to what the girls have going on, okay? So right now you have a three-way tie okay, between South San, United, and Alexander, okay? So that means that there's three at eight and two, okay? Alexander, South San, and United. Someone will go down to eight and three tonight. Okay, between here, uh, Alexander and United, and that's gonna end up leaving a two-way tie. Okay, we want a two-way tie for first, and then there's also gonna be a two-way tie for um, for second place. So that's gonna be really shake things up. You know, we're gonna see how South Sand did tonight uh, against Southwest, which would probably be a win for them. So with them winning there, that's gonna bring them up to eight and three. So we'll see how this district's gonna shape up with there's uh, four teams battling for four spots as well there, and then two two-way tie for first and a two-way tie for second as well there. As far as it misses a three-pointer, United with the ball to start this second half. And they were cold shooting. Scored four points in the first quarter. Scored 18 in the second as they heated up a bit. But gave up 14 in the first and never recovered from that. Here's an easy shot in the paint. And that one rolls off the mark. That's the kind of night it's been for United thus far. Alexander. Gets a rebound, and here come the Bulldogs in the front court. Perez makes a nice move on the baseline. A lot of contact charge. 7.23 to go here in the third quarter. Alexander led 14-4 to after one quarter of play. Earlier, the girls' side of things saw Alexander more or less cruise to a victory over United. Esparza gets that one off. That won't go. Rebounding foul this time over the back. United makes contact. Seven oh six to go here in the third quarter. Marco Pena has his shot blocked, and here comes United in the front court is Osuna. Osuna has it stripped out of his hands, and that's going to be off his leg. We'll go the other way. Great resilience to get back and play some defense there by Alexander when 
And Salinas, you know, you got to give him credit all night. He's, he's got a very busy job, you know, not just staying with Pompa, uh, but also doing the little dirty work like that on defense. It's great Pena. defensive possession. Pena with the ball for Alexander. He's only got seven points. Yet his team leads. There's a layup up and in made by Creston Jackson. 6.38 to go in the third quarter. Back to an 11-point lead for Alexander. They had double-digit leads in the first half as well. Turnover by United. Alexander with the ball yet again. Jackson throws it in. In the backcourt, good recognition that time by Mimo Salinas. Did not touch that ball until he got established in the backcourt. Whistling a foul call away from the ball on a pass to Pena. You know, and now Esparza draws the draws the, the task of guarding Peña. He just got a little too antsy there. Peña catches in the backcourt. Curiosity was, was he going to be healthy and was he going to be 100%? He hasn't been lighting up the scoreboard, hasn't needed to. How about this one? Yep. Three for Peña. That's about as far away as you want to shoot, my friends. Made it look easy. Yeah, he really doesn't have a, a range, per se. Now, as I said, during warm-ups, I counted 32 of 40 that he made. Some of those contested. They had a designed player out there to contest his shots during warm-ups. There's off the ball. That's a push-off. Foul against United. If they're not careful, Alexander will run away with this game right here to start this third quarter. Pena's got the ball. 5-0 run to start the quarter for Alexander. Pena. Off the dribble, lost it. There's a turnover, and here come the Longhorns in the front court. Whistle and a foul call. Anytime United tries to get off to the races, Evie, that defense recovers for Alexander. Yeah, Alexander, you know, we've, we've seen some great performances, not only by the, by the girls on defense, you know, but the boys are just right there as well. They're, they're just good as, as good as them. Pampa has the ball on that right side. Hands it off to Esparza. Esparza has a back tap, and that's a foul on Marco Pena. And that'll stop play with 5.39 to go in the third. Last year, it was San Antonio, South San Antonio, going 5-2 and two in the first run through district play, and then they went 7-0. and oh. This year, they're trying to do the same thing. They're going to be chasing whoever wins this to keep pace. There's a shot up and in. Didn't mean to do it, but it just fell right into their hands. You know, Peña almost lost it there, and luckily he was able to, you know, pass a, the ball down to the post, and luckily they got it. That three went in, but wave it off. Timeout was called before Andre Papa teed it up. 16-point lead, 7-0 run by Alexander. We're in the third after this timeout. We'll be back on realsportslive.com. Help. Help us give back to the community. Volunteer your time or donate to Habitat for Humanity Restore. Check out habitatrgv.org for more info or drop by our McAllen or Harlingen stores. Restore, great stuff, great prices, great cause. Back here after the timeout, Joe Bowling, Evie Vasquez alongside and Alexander breaking out of the huddle. Meanwhile, United already out on the floor. 5-10 remaining in the third quarter. It'll be United basketball. Andre Pampa has been limited to seven points. Marco Pena on the other side has 10. Pampa has it on a top of that offense. Handles it with either hand. Right there with him is Mimo Salinas. Backs up. Shot a three. Missed it. Rebound taken down by Perez. Here comes Alexander. Will Perez push it? Yes, sir. Right down the lane. Lay it up. No good. Offensive rebound, but a foul call first. Stops play with 4.41 to go. Four points scored by United in the first quarter, period. Thus far here in the third quarter, none. Yeah, they find themselves in a 16-point deficit, you know, and in a blink of an eye, they can just go ahead and get into a 20-plus, so they got to see if they can find the rhythm. Perez, free throw, good. Kike Perez, now seven points in the game. 4.41 to go in the third. 
Next one by Perez. Good. Good. United with the ball. Into the front court. It goes to Gonzalez. Gonzalez to Idrago. From Osuna. Back to Idrago. In the corner to Osuna. Backdoor cut. Here's Pampa. Attacks in the paint. Shot and made it. You know, that was a strategically designed there, you know, by getting a UCLA cut or a Princeton cut, you know, to set up, to set up the offense. Pena has the ball on top. Takes it off a jump stop, lay it up. Got caught for a travel. Which usually he'll, he'll get away with, uh, but caught him that time. United ball, halfway through the third. Longhorns need to put together some kind of big run. There's a lob, and there's a tip ball and a steal, and here comes Alexander. Good defense that time by Creston Jackson. On the sideline, it goes out of bounds. You know, and we're starting to see a difference, you know, between the first and the, and the second game. You know, they lit up the scoreboard with threes, if you remember uh, from last game, and now it just seems that United really hasn't been able to get, you know, a good flow on offense. So they haven't been, uh, been able to get some points on the board. Pena has the ball for Alexander. Takes it off the dribble. Shot it off the glass. That one's no good. Rebound by United. United needs a couple of stops and then some made baskets on the other side. Gonzalez lost his dribble. Tries to get it to Pena. Or check that. Tried to get it to Pompa. And Pena knocks it out of bounds. 3.32 left here in the third quarter. Substitution in the game. Donnie Etheridge into the game for the Bulldogs. United ball, Longhorns. Throw it in. That's Idrago. On a clear out on that far side. Correct some traffic. Zips a pass to Gonzalez. Gonzalez freed up. Lost his dribble. Finds Pompa. 3.15 to go. In the third. Pompa off the dribble. And the whistle blows with 3.08 to go in the third. Two shots coming up. Pompa at the line. Makes the first. Andre Pompa now in double digits. Pompa with 10. And he made that. Substitution checks in. Osuna will check out of the game. For United. Comes Marco Pena. Pena. For Alexander. Off the dribble. Hangs in the air. Rolled it off. No good. Rebound by United. Here come the Longhorns. That's Idrago. Idrago down that right side. Finds a trailer. Andre Pompa tees it up. No. Back of the rim. Perez gets the rebound for Alexander and then gets fouled before he can get the outlet pass away. Yeah, that trap cost him there. They're hoping to get a, a steal by, by trying to trap him, but get a too antsy. Got to be careful with your hands there on that trap. If you're going to bring it, you bring it, but you just got to be able to keep your hands to yourself and, and not reach too much. Alexander with the ball. And they free up Perez, but away from the ball. The foul is called on Alexander. 14-point game. 234 remaining. If you're united, you start carving this game up into little two-minute segments. The next two minutes, you want to win this by about six points. And then do the same thing in the next two minutes and then hold on for the final six minutes of this game. On the drive, in the traffic, shot goes up, no good, and a foul call. Abel Gonzalez goes to the line. 2.23 to go. You don't look up thinking we're going to go on a 14-0 run, although it could happen, but you don't look at it from that perspective. Yeah, and you really don't hope for it because of the fact that, you know, a big game like this, you know, you're fighting for a playoff spot, so you, you really have to be on your game and, and really be aware of what's going on. Next one by Gonzalez. Missed them both. Rebound to Alexander. Bulldogs with the ball and the lead. Outside to Pena. 
Pena on the drive, dishes off inside, good. 2.07 left here in the third quarter. Longhorns with the ball. Needing points produced from somewhere. Edrago gives it up, gets it back. Over to Pompa. Pompa on a clear up. Back to Edrago. Look inside. It's not on the inside. It's not on the outside. Back to Pompa. Tees up a quick three, force that. Rebound. Pinballs off two players. Touch last by United. You know, and for some of you out there wondering, you know, what's going on to the offense for the Longhorns, you know, you're, you're accustomed to seeing, you know, a smooth and, and great offense by United. That's usually one of their strengths. Uh, but today, you know, you have to give credit to Alexander's defense. You know, they've been able to, to do it in and out. So they've been able to stop them and contain them to the, just 26 points. You know, kudos to them and, and, and great offensive passes like that. You know, being able to drive and get past your original defender to look for the open player that's been helping them, you know, get this big lead. Another assist for Marco Pena. First meeting between these two teams. He lit up the scoreboard. Now his teammates are, thanks to his assist. There's an open three. That won't go. Pena gets a rebound. Pena brings it up. Off the dribble. Thought about a three. Hands it off. In the corner, Alexander. 50 seconds left here. There's a steal for United. Longhorns need a bucket out of this. Pompa attacks, gets fouled. You know, great switch of the hands. You know, he drives and, and he's leading by with his right side, you know, but he's able to reach back and shoot with his left and draw a foul. You know, that's something that, that you really can't uh, help but notice, and, and that, that's great acrobatic work there once he gets in the air. Andre Pompa at the line. This team's down 18. They've been outscored 13-4 to four here in this third quarter. Makes that one. Not, not the game that we expected, uh, but it is something that, that does happen when... When your opposing team gives you so much good defense, okay, and, and they're just working on all cylinders. You know, we saw it with the girls as well. You know, it, it kind of worked out the same way for, for Alexander. They, they set the pace from the beginning. You know, they were able to do what they needed to do in between the lines and, and get a, a great margin of lead and just not give it up. Next free throw for Andre Pompa. It is good. Pompa now with 13 points in the game. Substitution. Gabriel Gaetan checks in. Pompa will have a seat on the bench to close out this third quarter. 40 seconds left. Alexander with the ball. From the backcourt area. Still in the backcourt. Chasing is United's Longhorns. And they'll get the steal. 32 seconds to go. Quickly ahead. Layup good. Gaetan with the layup. United traps again. Alexander will break the press this time across the Aranda. Now they go inside, and there's a whistle and a foul called on United. I was about to say, Evie, it was 18 points, and United needed to make one more quick run if they wanted to get back in this game. Otherwise, Alexander put it away. Here's a shot off, no good, but a foul called into the free throw line. will go Alexander. In this case, it'll be Donnie Etheridge. Yeah, and because of the fact that they've just been able to do so much... Uh you know, inside the paint, Alexander has been able to get some of those chip away at the lead and, and just be able to, to get that big margin. Etheridge makes the first. There's another difference. Bounces off the rim are falling in for Alexander. They're rolling off for United. It's been that way all night. Yeah, it has. And, you know, you really can't do anything but, uh, but just continue to grind and, and continue to work and, and see how things finish. Etheridge connects on that one. And then United promptly throws it away. So now Alexander with another chance to put 15 seconds to go to edge out even further. They've outscored the Longhorns 15 to 8 here in the third. There's a loose ball and a turnover, and here come the Longhorns in the front court. Esparza lays it up and in. Sammy Esparza with the bucket. Four seconds to go. Three, two. This will count for three. And a whistle blows and a foul called at the point two second mark of this third quarter. Yeah, and it's just that snowball effect. You know, if you're united, you have to recognize and realize how much time is on the clock, and you just score a basket, and because of this, you know, you're gonna possibly give them three. I'm, I'm not sure if they counted that as a three. They counted it as a one and one, 
Okay, so you're gonna get uh, possibly two baskets off of the two shots off of this. So you really can't do that to yourself. You can't shoot yourself in the foot. Well, the official indicated one and one, but they just missed the first free throw and they're still at the line. That's Jay Arizola makes that one. So they will give him three free throws. I don't know what the one and one was all about. Unless they were calling the foul on 11. That must be what it is. Next free throw for Arizona. 0.2 seconds left in the third. Takes it back to a 16 point game and that is the end of three. That one wouldn't have counted. We played three in Alexander. Just like the girls game. It's taken the lead and just won't let go. Back after this on realsportslive.com. The reason we made this Quesadillas Tres Marias is because there's a little village in Mexico that it's really popular and it's known for its quesadillas. You're gonna come to my kitchen and you're gonna see that we have no cans. Everything is fresh. We use achote. We do the mole ourselves. We have three types of quesadillas. One is flour tortilla. We have nistamal made, handmade tortilla. And our specialty, which are the fried tortillas. That's the concept we bring to the north of Mexico and south of Texas. For me, this is not only a business, you know, it's my house, it's my career, it's my family, it's my friends that come here. Brownsville, it's a gentle city, a kind city. I invite you to come discover Brownsville. You can't miss it. Back here, and we are set for the fourth quarter. Laredo Alexander breaking out of the huddle for the start of the final eight minutes of play, and what a game they've put together thus far. The Bulldogs scored 14 points in the first quarter, 17 in the second, 17 more in the third. Meanwhile, gave up four, 18, and 10, and lead by 16 points and get the ball as we start the final quarter of play. Marco Pena. Dare I say has been quiet with 10 points. He's probably got seven assists in this ball game. Hasn't need to do much more than that. As far as scoring goes, his team has done the job defensively to prevent anything needed from an outright just blitz from the offense. Yeah, you're seeing United come out a little bit with a little bit more urgency and, and chasing a little bit more uh, than they had before, you know, before uh, earlier in this game. And they're looking to do that, you know, just kind of disrupt the offense a little bit more and see if they can go ahead and get back into this game. United, There's no time. United basketball. Need a couple of made baskets in a row. Esparza gives it up to Adrago. Top of the key. Quick three launch. That one's off the back of the rim. Rebound taken down by United. Longhorns get another chance here. In the corner. Now to the baseline. Back outside. Off the dribble, Adrago. Work it, left side again. Quick move on the baseline, reverse layup, count it. And then quickly, timeout was called. Gaetan made the basket. We'll keep it right here, 6.55 to go. That's a full timeout. We'll be back after this. United talking it over, trying to solve the riddle. 14 point deficit, back after this. I opened Alex Oral with the intention to give people in Brownsville and those who visit us a very unique experience in the area of retail. We saw the need to give people a personal experience that only a boutique could provide. Here in Alex and Raw, what we work for is searching for different pieces, textures we bring from India, from Mexico, trying to make this a different experience the people to find treasures here in their own valley. It's a pleasure to welcome everybody and making them a part of our family. We invite you to discover Brownsville. You can't miss it. Back here after the timeout, Laredo United gets the ball back. Need a basket here, this will help, but it won't go. Rebound by Alexander, who have controlled this game and it's been an impressive show. 
Pena has the ball in the backcourt. Hands it off to Salinas. Now that ball's deflected, stolen by the Longhorns. Here they come again in the corner. That's a three, and it won't go. Rebound by Alexander. Outlet pass, deflected, stolen. United had it for a moment. Alexander recovers, and now they're out scrambling each other and then another timeout. Alexander coach just says, hey, let's, this is not how we built this lead. We'll keep it here, Evie. And we're going we're gonna to work on getting right back to what we did to take control of this game. Right, and the thing is that it's not that you see this game as, okay, we've do we're done and, and we, really, we pretty much already got maybe a, a win in the, in the bag, but the thing is that you also don't want to play to somebody else's, you know, tempo. You want to continue to do your style of basketball. You want to be able to stick to your game plan and be able to get this win uh, you know, on a good note, no, not finish on a bad note. So that's that's basically what he's trying to do and just kind of trying to settle his players down and, and remind them, hey, stick to the game plan. What has been working for you? Don't try to overdo anything. 627 left in this game. Meanwhile, United is saying, okay, if we're going to be a playoff team, which they are, and we're playing against a team that's a playoff team, then we better figure out what happens if you find yourself down in the fourth quarter and your season's on the line. Here's a good test. There's a travel. All right. And that's the thing, you know, any games like this, you, it's a learning opportunity no matter what. So any game you're in, you want to be able to get the most out of it. Just saw where Harlingen won, but Jeremy Vazquez, his team was celebrating the victory, and they piled on and landed on his leg, and he has to be taken for x-rays. Hope he's okay. Oh, that's yeah. one of the top players for Harlingen. Yeah, you know, you always uh, hate to hear that. celebrations scare you to death as a coach. I know, I know I've had coaches tell me all the time. I tell my players, don't jump. Don't jump if you're going to get excited and get in a big, big pile up. You see it a lot in baseball. You see it a lot in all these celebrations. United with the ball. On the dribble. There's a shot on the baseline. That one rolls off. No good. Rebound taken down and Pena stepped out of bounds. Andre Bompa on the bench right now for United. United's had several opportunities here in this last minute and a half. Bompa checks back in the game. United will throw it in. They'll get it in. Looking. Bompa turns, squares up for three, count it. 5-0 run for United. Whistle. Ball goes out of bounds. Touch last by United. And urgency's there right now for United. Yes, it is. And 11 points, you know, that's just a, a few baskets away from uh, getting it back, you know, possibly to a tie. So 11 points and a blink of an eye can just, you know, get down to a one-point lead. So it's a lot of clock left, and Alexander cannot take a, take a possession off. Perez misses a three. United with the ball. They can cut it to single digits here. On the drive, the left-hand side, off the glass, no good. Rebound taken down by Alexander, and then he's out of bounds. Yeah, you carry. cannot be outside. Yeah, you cannot be outside and then jump back in there and, and try to continue the play. It's out of bounds. Earlier tonight, it was Laredo United falling to Laredo Alexander by 20, 62-42. Here on the boys' side, Alexander with the lead, and there was a technical foul called with 5.44 to go. United, again, Evie, make these free throws. You're going to get the ball back. Made free throws gets it to single digits. And that's only a couple of baskets away from actually making it a game. So, again, it's never too late or it's never too early you know, to be able to, to play and, and get back into this game if you're united. Pompa makes the free throw and misses the second. Ten-point game, 5.44 to go. This is that point in time in which you start looking at the game from the Alexander perspective. Get a stop here, get a couple of made baskets. It's like, okay, that's fine. They, they can make runs at us. Just keep extending it back to double digits. Before you know it, time's gone. Yeah, and I'm interested in seeing how United is going to finish this game. It, it looks like they they, they want to get back into this game, but can they, you know, can they do the little things correct and, and just chip away slowly, but, you know, Esparza. positively. There you are. As far as I missed that one, and then away from the ball, a foul is called. And they're going to call that against Alexander, so another free throw chance for United. United. 
double bonus already for the Longhorns, so two free throws here. You see, and that's another thing that hasn't been going their way for United, their free throws. You know, these free throws are, are killer. They could have already cut it down to a seven-point game here, but they just missed, you know, three you know, in, the, in the last minute. They make that one, and it cuts it back down to, you know, a nine-point lead. We'll see. In the backcourt, Marco Pena's fouled. He'll waltz to the other side for free throws for Laredo Alexander. 7-0 run by United to start this fourth quarter, and yet they look up, they're down nine. That's how impressive Alexander has been tonight, my friends. Pena at the line. First one good. Here's what you have, the luxury of Alexander. You got a pre prolific scorer in Marco Pena who hasn't had to score yet. Should United climb all the way back in this game, Marco Pena has the ability to then turn on the scoring show. To make an appearance, uh, as some would say. But yeah, they're gifted and, and blessed in the fact that you know they have some great players and, and some great role players that have been able to to pick up the slack and been able to you know get some of the scoring and some of the defensive stops. So. I mean, they're a great balanced team, and uh, we'll see what happens. Guzman makes a bucket, and then Pena gets fouled again in the backcourt. So Pena will head to the free throw line. Yet again, Marco Pena. We said he'd been quiet. He still has 12 points, which is tops on the team. And Guzman just fouled out of this game for the United Longhorns. Paying you back at the line. On the night, five of six. Is this a one and one? Or is this two already? Double bonus. Two shots. Doesn't matter, he makes the first. Second one coming up. Still five minutes left in this game. Laredo Alexander, Laredo United. Alexander with the lead. Paying you another made free throw. United ball. Can it? Forward to exchange baskets if you're united. Pompa off the dribble, rolls it off the mark. No good, offensive rebound. Tipped up once, twice. And now a loose ball picked up by Alexander. Another loose ball. United misses another point blank shot. Rebound taken down by Alexander. And now coming up limping is Ramiro Ortiz for the Bulldogs. And then the front court, a foul call. Pena back to the line. Four thirty-three left here in this game. We should get a treat, you know, in a, in a couple minutes. We're going to go ahead and have uh, the Alexander coach, uh, girls coach, come on and, and talk to us a little bit about this district and how it's going to be winding down for them. Uh, great treat for these fans. And, and uh, uh, you know, it's something that's going to come down to next week. So we'll, 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 hear, we'll get his point of view and we'll hear what he's got to say. Cardenas, or Pena makes the free throws. United with a lob inside, that's good. Made by Ozuna. Made basket, allows the trap to be set up by United. Pena is gonna be fouled in the backcourt again. Marco Pena, who is now nine of 10 at the line, is a great luxury to have when you can inbound the ball knowing the other team is gonna to have to trap slash foul. Yeah, because of the fact that the position that you put yourself in, you know, you kind of can dictate a lot of things like that and, and be allowed to, to do things and have that luxury. Free throw one, good. Pena with another. Back to a 12-point lead. Make it 13 now for Alexander. Pena now with 18 points. United with the basketball. Pompa off the drive, off the glass and in. And it's still a 10-point, oh, 11-point lead now. Uh, cut back to 11 uh, for Alexander, there's so we'll see. There's a near steal, and Pena has to go off his leg out of bounds. Turnover back to United, 4.06 to go. Longhorns to throw it in. Right side, Pompa, tees it up, front of the rim, no good. Rebound, loose ball, and a foul is going to be called. 
on United. Ozuna. Fans don't like that on the United side, but that's one of those, Evie, you've played basketball long enough. You can edge a hip into a guy and, and keep your hands in the air. Fans will focus on your hands weren't around him. Your hip shoved him out of bounds, and there's the there's the call. Yeah, and I think also what also helps to it is, is the fact that you get such open shots like that, and you get these opportunities to actually score, and when they're, they're not going your way, it kind of just not just frustrates the players, but, you know, the fans see it as well. So it kind of trickles down, and, and the fans see that. Elian Fernandez fouls out of the game. Back to the free throw line. Ortiz, Ramiro makes the first. As a team, how about this? Laredo Alexander, 21 of 23 from the free throw line. That's 91%. Right on cue, they'll miss that. 3.53 to go. 12-point game. United with the ball. Pompa. Oliveras hands it off to Ozuna. Ozuna back outside. There's a three by Esparza that won't go. Weak side rebound. United gets another chance on the baseline. That one's short. Whistle and a foul call. Two shots coming up. Clock stops with 3.33 to go. Fourth quarter action coming to you from Laredo, Texas. Reminding you, next week, we're trying to put the final wraps on getting preparations. We'll have basketball next week, but from there, we're going to try to get coverage going on. How you doing, Coach? Get that microphone up here. The following week, which is two weeks from yesterday, we're going to have softball action. Ozuna makes a free throw. 10-point game with 3.30 to go. There's a foul. And more free throws coming up. Free throw time for Alexander. Number one, good. This is Kike Perez. Perez with another one. He's now got double figures. He's at 10 points in the game. 320 left here in this ball game. United with the ball, down 12. Pompa on the drive. Hands it off to Esparza. Esparza looking for Pompa. Tipped out of bounds for Alexander. Active defense that time by Mimo Salinas. Clock stops with 3.18 to go in the game. Alexander trying for the sweep. Girls won earlier. Guys trying to follow suit. In the backcourt, Pompa has the ball. Pompa brings it front court. Brings it outside. There's an open three for Esparza, but that's off the front of the rim. No good. Rebound taken down by the Longhorns on the offensive side. Shot goes up off the rim. No good. Offensive board again. Put it up and count it in the foul. Longhorns trying to stay in this game, cut it to 10 and get a chance at the free throw line as Gabriel Gaetan steps to the line. And right now, Coach Cardenas of the, of the Laredo Alexander girls joins us. Coach, congratulations on the win earlier today. Thank, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Let's talk about that game and your girls, I mean, took control of the game, took control of the tempo and walked out with a 20 point victory, Coach, which took some by surprise. But game plan, it worked. Well, by surprise, just because um, I guess not a lot of teams maybe, or maybe they just forgot about what we're about <laughs> or what we've done. Um, you know, we, we've, we've been, um, been able to have these kids healthy for the past couple of weeks, and, and that's been huge for us. Uh, a lot of people don't know this at all, but we lost about four of our five starters come uh, before district started. You know, and uh, we come out here and, you know, we're trying our best to make sure we put them in a position to be successful. Talk about the, the hustle points. Ali Benavides, coach, double-double in the game. And, and we talked about it. It could have been a triple-double if you want to count number of times on the floor. 
number of times disrupting a play. What a game she had for you tonight. Uh, most certainly, the, that, that kid is all heart. You know, she's a sophomore. She's built like a senior. Um, she is just, she's nails. You know, she goes as hard as nails, you know what I mean? And, and no matter how much she gets hit, she's going to continue working hard. And, and that, that's just who she is by nature. Uh, but, you know, I, I had asked her, and, and specifically because, you know, my big girl's got, you know, two herniated discs, and, and my, my number number four on top has got, you know, her ankles all messed up. And and she, um, just by nature, is going to go hard, you know, and and doesn't surprise me at all the way she played today. But I had asked her to make sure that we put an emphasis on those 50-50 balls. Coach, we're talking about... Uh with Coach Cardenas here of Laredo Alexander on the girls' side. Now, the way your district is playing out, uh, the top two, you're, you're amongst them right now. Correct. What have you guys talked about if that ends up being a tie? Or have you? Well, what's going to happen, though, is is if it's going to be a tie, it'll be for second and third place. Um, on Tuesday, we had the playing south, and we both have identical records. So there it is. So um, I really haven't read the minutes, but I do know that we have the – um, I guess the two game, I guess, sweep over United. Um, and, and with that, you know, I, I don't know how it works. I'm not sure we're going to flip for it and play for it or what. We've just been taking it one game at a time. And, and, and at the end of the day, uh, we're just worried about South come Tuesday. After that, you know, we'll figure it out. But one through four in our district could easily win um, district any day, <laughs> any day, man. Our one through four is South Sand is no joke. I mean, that, that's a track meet. You know, you play against South Sand. And we used to play like that a lot with that pace and tempo. But we, we've learned to play a lot of, um, I guess, more of an unselfish basketball. You know, we're not going to have, you know, one kid going off at 25, 30 points a game. That's not, that's not our style. We can, though, but that's not our style. So that being said, then, as a coach, knowing the competition that's in the top four in this district, if it ends up being a situation where you have your say, coin flip, or I want to play them yet again, you know, where do you lean? That's going to be tough. Um, at this point right now, we want to make sure that, that <laughs> we exit the game um, healthy. That's the most important thing. Um, nothing surprises me, you know. Uh, our point guard uh, was really and truly, uh, was probably not going to play today, but that kid's the heart and soul of what we do in this team. And she, that's a four-year starter, you know, played in the all-star, the state all-star game. I mean, that, that kid is, um, she's our quarterback, you know. She's our Tom Brady, you know. She's, she's you know, she plays heavy minutes and, and, you know, if it takes us trying to prove a point and want to play, then, then we'll do it. If not, I guess we'll see where the standings are. To be honest with you, I have no idea even what's going on in the Valley right now. I, I, I don't know. I don't even know. I just heard a little while ago that McCallum Memorial was number one, but I don't know. I mean, I don't, to be honest with you, I don't, I don't even, we've never done that. You know, I've been there for six years, and, and the girls know that playoff talk is not even in the works right now. We just... One game at a time. We're, exactly. That, that we, we're, we're about that. You know, we're, we're not about, I mean, playoff shirt. Sure, we don't even have that. We don't, we don't even, you know, we're just, we're just, very, we're very basic. <laughs> we're very basic. We just try to keep it, you know, and keep ourselves grounded. That's what we try to do. Evie? Um, well, you know, we always in our practice, um, we, we end up, we end up talking about pace and tempo a lot. You know, we, we, uh, you know, it, it's, 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 it's ironic that you asked that because one of our keys to victory today was, was, uh, pace and tempo. And we wanted to make sure we control that. Um, you know, United, United's a very good team, but they're, They've got some weaknesses just the way we do. And, 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 you know, we don't, we never had a common opponent throughout the season. And I think that our non district schedule has allowed us to play that way. You know, when you play, you know, you play, I don't know, Steel twice back to back. You know, you, you're playing Brandeis. We're playing those kind of schools that, that have been in the Elite Eight. And, you know, you know Steel has been in you know, the Final Four. And, and, and you're able to compete with them and kids going to USC on a full ride, another one going to Baylor, another one going to a and That doesn't phase these kids, you know, and, and, and we want to make sure that we did that to them in the beginning of the season. So come district time, it would just be second nature to them.
Yeah, and it was inevitable because, you know, we talked about it up here, how you had fast break opportunities. It looks like, hey, no, we play our style of basketball. We're going to go ahead and slow it down. We know what they're, they're bringing us a 2-3. Yeah. You know, we're going to go ahead and do what we what we need to do. And, and your bigs came out big today, you know, uh, Zamora. And then you had, uh, you know, your motor down here coming out and giving you such a great game. And, you know, to me, as, as a coaching perspective, that was something that was just so beautiful. You know, we're going to play our game from the very beginning. So kudos on that. And uh, what a great performance. You know, I, I couldn't get anything uh, else out of it. You had everything. Your shots were going in because of the confidence that, that you were able to build throughout the game and because of the fact that you were playing your game. Correct. You, know, you, didn't, you, didn't, you weren't able to, you know, to play anybody else's game. And, and the reason that we started off saying, you know, it was a surprise was because you're usually not used to seeing United, you know, kind of stopped or, or, you know, being held the way you guys held them. So um, if you can go ahead and talk to us a little bit about how uh, your season is winding down and Memorial is the number one team. And, and I know that on Max Preps, we're looking and they already have the, that first um, that first week playoff week set up and they have you against Memorial. Uh, what is it that you're that you're looking forward to when you go into the, the, the playoffs? Well, well, if Memorial is number one and, and, and we get um, if Memorial is number one and we get that that first place uh, nod, then we wouldn't we wouldn't meet up the first round. Um, if I'm not mistaken, if they, if they go by last year's bracket, I think first and fourth are paired and second and third are paired. Um, but at the end of the day, you know we're gonna play who we need to play. Uh, Memorial's talented, uh, you know. So is United. You know they are. They're very talented and, and they've got a great program. You know, Coach Carmona does a great job with her team. Um, but people need to understand also, you know, uh, just you know, just giving the kids a little bit of credit from Alexander High School. Not me, you know, I just do a little bit of a bit. We're blessed with great kids, and and um, the last time the kids checked, you know, uh, we've we've been a staple in the playoffs for the past Manel Laredo history. I guess 17 out of the past 20 years. You know, and and you don't and, sneak up on anyone, coach. I'm no, telling you right now, you don't sneak up on you any know, of them. Like like we don't. You know, and, and it's not me. The, we have previous coaches that paid the foundation, you know, and, and, and they established that culture. And we're just trying to make sure that we do a very good job of, of maintaining it and maybe, you know, adding a little bit of history to the, you know, themselves. But like I said, we're going to take it one game at a time. And, and, and if it's Memorial or Mitsumazu, I mean, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I really don't know. Uh, I know Edinburgh's playing very well. Um, you got other teams like that. But we're going to just make sure we take care of United South. I'll tell you one thing. Uh, United South is going to bring it. You know, Coach Guardiola, United South is going to bring it. You know, they'd be United, and, and they've got 10 kids back from last year's team um, that went, about, I think, three rounds also. So it's going to be very interesting. Final question, where is that game, Coach, and just how big a crowd are you expecting for that one? Well, you all are more than welcome to join us if you all want to go ahead and get to that game. Uh, it'll be at Alexander High School. Um, you, you know, um, Coach has my number. Yeah, we can set you up there if you want to. It's going to be at our place on Tuesday. If, if uh, we win that one, obviously the winner of that game is the district champ. So, you know, with that being said, you know, we'll go ahead and, uh, and, and play on Tuesday at 730. Sounds good, Coach. Appreciate you joining us here, and congratulations. Thanks again for allowing us to cover Thank your you. teams. Thank you. And just for the record, this is the first time I ever do this, you know. And can I get a selfie? That way my kids can laugh at me. You got it. That's All Coach right. Cardenas yeah. right up here in the booth. No, we're not about this life over here, man. There you go, and guys. you got it. I appreciate that. Y'all have a blessed, safe trip back, guys. You bet, sir. That's Coach Cardenas for Alexander's the Lady Bulldogs, who were victorious tonight against Laredo United. Meanwhile, we're just uh, even Steven status quo. Alexander on the boys' side, maintaining this separation between United and are continuing to, to lead this game. We're up by 11, and Payne's going to get fouled again. And, Evie, we went through a couple of minutes talking with the coach there who, uh, you know, well-grounded understanding that hey he's playing for a district title on tuesday against a team he's tied with so wow what a, what an invitation there for us to be invited to come back and do, and do that game um but meanwhile on this boys game alexander uh, in the entire span while we're talking to coach the the lead has been back and forth by just a couple points but it's always been separated by double digits and, and this alexander team doing just what the girl, girls did show up game plan stick to your game don't change the pace and, and right now, a minute 14 away from walking away with a win. Yeah, and just stick to what's working, you know, and, and don't shy away, like, from the game plan, just like you said. And, you know, 
they came in with the purpose and, and you can tell from the very beginning that they were the first team to get a feel for the game. You know, they started off playing some good defense. Yeah, they started going to the bucket and they started getting some easy baskets. Uh, it was United who had just a little bit more of a harder time, you know, getting getting it going. Alexander, there's a three on the way and that's up and in. So now we got a nine point game with a minute seven to go. And there's a whistle in the backcourt. More free throws coming up. And this is the only chance United really has, Evie, and that is see if some of those shots fall and then hope somebody misses some free throws on the other end. That's right. And, and a minute, it's not too much time, but it's enough time to see if they can go ahead and get two fast baskets and it, and it gives you enough time to, to at least finish the game with a good, uh, good, good ending. We'll be talking with Freddie Heredia and just see if he can make that trip out there for Real Sports Live Southwest to handle that district title game uh, between the top two teams. That's Laredo Alexander and Laredo United South, who both were victorious here tonight, setting up that Tuesday matchup for the final game. And like he said, the loser will fall down uh, into second place and most likely be tied with Laredo United. And Alexander owns the tiebreaker. They swept United in two games. So they'll have to decide how that plays out. There's a three that won't go, and then the whistle and a foul. Free throws again for Laredo Alexander. Meanwhile, in the RGV, keep watching our website. We'll have our standings back up there. I was looking earlier. I know that we're making some changes. Uh, it seems like every minute on the website, something's changing, something's, but it's always growing. It's always improving. Uh, but our standings will be up so that you fans can kind of take a look at who's where uh, in the RGV to kind of calculate out what games are going to be the games on Tuesday. And I'll, I'll tell you right now, we've got two crews. I know we're going to San Isidro and San Perlita to give the small school some love on the boys' side and on the girls' side. But there's some games on the girls' side that are going to just be, you should be here, you should be here, you should be here. And so by next year, when we've got about eight or ten crews going out there, we can cover that. But we're going to have a tough choice on where do we go for that final Tuesday night over on that side of the Rio Grande Valley. Right, we'll take a look at the schedules and, and we'll like to hear from the fans and see what you know what, what they wanna, want us to bring there and I'll help you out there. Uh, we'll see what happens. Layup was good, back to a 10 point game. Another whistle, another foul. Timeout called by Alexander. With that timeout, we'll take a quick timeout as well. Again, our thanks to Coach Cardenas joining us from uh, Laredo Alexander on the girls' side. That's Evie Vasquez. I'm Joe Bowling. We'll be back. This is realsportslive.com. The reason we made this Quesadillas Tres Marias is because there's a little village in Mexico that it's really popular and it's known for its quesadillas. You're going to come to my kitchen and you're going to see that we have no cans. Everything is fresh. We use a chote. We do the mole ourselves. We have three types of quesadillas. One is flour tortilla. We have nistamal made handmade tortilla. And our specialty, which are the fried tortillas, that's the concept we bring to the north of Mexico and south of Texas. For me, this is not only a business, you know, it's my house, it's my career, it's my family, it's my friends that come here. Brownsville, it's a gentle city, a kind city. I invite you to come discover Brownsville. You can't miss it. Have the ball up 10, 35 seconds left here in this game. Throw it ahead to Marco Pena. Hands it off to Perez, lay it up and in. 12 point lead. 30 seconds left here in this ball game. Alexander with the ball. Again, the winner here, Alexander, will uh, maintain a, a control of first place in a tie with South San Antonio. So that district is not decided yet because of a win here for Alexander. It helps because they just completed a sweep over United. But by no means is this district decided, Evie Vasquez. Same thing on the girls' side. There are other teams still alive and well. Right, absolutely. So now you're going to go ahead and have two teams on top. 
okay, with uh, United South and Alexander, and then you're gonna end up having United and South San battle it out to see who's gonna end up getting second, third, and or fourth. And then this game is in the book, 73-59. It's the Bulldogs of Alexander winning this game over United. Hope you enjoyed our broadcast. We're gonna wrap it up pretty quick here because we got a long way to travel and, and a busy day tomorrow. I'm still trying to find out if St. Joe was indeed taking on Antonian, and I think they are. And if that's the case, well, then uh, yours truly, and we'll pack up shop, and we'll go to Market Days tomorrow morning on Jackson Street in Harlingen, Texas, and invite all of you to come out and join us there. Come out and, and see our, our shop at 206 East Jackson, and at the same time, come on back and kind of see the studio that I'm constructing for Rio Sports Live com, where we're going to have our, our future sports cast going on from that studio. And we got some some better news coming up on another potential studio opportunity. We've got a meeting on Monday on that that may just change the whole world as far as realsportslive.com and our ability to provide quality sports cast, not just live games, but sports cast, which is, again, part of the dream of building an eventual television station in the Rio Grande Valley and start there with regional coverage on an all sports television network. That's what we're building. I, I promise you that's what the dream is. That's what we're building. Don't anyone let you tell, let them tell you that they're first or they're doing something that's never been done. Whatever's being done, uh, someone quoted it earlier this week. Now, many will try to copy it, but none can duplicate it. What we're doing here on Rio Sports Live Com. So, again, tomorrow we'll, we'll follow St. Joe and see if they're going to be playing there. If they are, yes, we'll be there. Again, keep watching the schedule because Tuesday's going to be something else to figure out what games we're going to cover. I know we're going to San Isidro. Uh, they're pretty excited to see us out there. But that girls game that we select for Tuesday night is going to have playoff on the line. And then we'll hope Freddie can get over to the Laredo Alexander taking on Laredo United south watch for softball coming up watch for baseball coming up watch for track and field coming up watch for soccer coming up hmm. you think we'll be busy evie oh i don't think uh, you're busy enough joe with <laughs> you you know you're always out there and and thank you for all the coverage that you've been doing evie vasquez made the trip across from the rio grande valley we're all going to get in the car and we're going to try to keep each other awake to my wife dahlia for running the camera she's going to take a nap well over 200 games we've already produced in the last two and a half months and there's 200 more coming up in the next two months. 1,000 in the next year. Guarantee it. Write it down right now and then go back a year from now and check it out. If indeed between February 1st and January 31st, we don't do 1,000 more games. This one in the books, final score. Alexander wins this one 73-59 over United. For Evie Vasquez, for Dahlia Bowling. I'm Joe Bowling. This is realsportslive.com. Good night. Good night, guys.